So far, we've learned how to name all sorts of hydrocarbon chains, whether they have double bonds, triple bonds, or side chains. However, what we've been doing so far will not support a concept called isomerism. We'll learn more about isomers in the next unit, but for now, we need to be able to remove as much ambiguity from our naming systems as possible. This is because our functional groups, which we will learn a lot more of, are going to have very different properties between the different types of functional groups, but will also have subtly different properties and subtly different reactivities depending on where they're placed on a molecule. For example, on the right side, well, your left, on the left side of the board here, I have four versions of butane, of butene, actually. Each one has a double bond, but each of these double bonds is in a different place. So how could I name the, all four of these butene? I can't. So in organic chemistry, when we're naming these things, we're actually going to specify the carbon that a certain functional group starts on. Let's take a look at this first one to understand what that means. The first thing we need to do is to number our carbons. I'm gonna do this from left to right. Sometimes it'll go right to left and we'll see when in just a minute. So I start here with number one, then two, three, and four. I can see that this is a four carbon chain that's gonna be butte, so I'm gonna name that butte. I have a double bond, that means it's going to be a butene. I'm just gonna leave myself a little space here. So this is gonna work just like normal, but the only difference is before the ene, I'm gonna write the number associated with the carbon that it starts on. So this will be number one. So this will be, this will be but one ene. Great. How about the next one? Well, how would that be different? Well, I can number it in the same way. One, two, three, and four. And now I have but, butene again, but this time my double bond starts on carbon number two. So I'm gonna say but two ene. All right, how about this one? Well, if we continued numbering from left to right, I would say one, two, three, four, but three ene, but this is gonna be a little bit different. The reason is that these are models of an actual three-dimensional molecule. If I took this molecule out of the board and flipped it around, what would it look like? It would actually look like this. So this molecule and this molecule are actually the exact same thing. So in order to name this correctly, I need to start numbering such that my constituent has the lowest number possible. That's gonna be our rule, that's how we're gonna do these. So, in the case of this butene, I actually need to start numbering from right to left. When we talk about more complex functional groups, we're gonna talk about orders of priority. There's always gonna be some functional group that has the highest priority, and we're gonna to need to make sure that functional group gets the lowest number possible. We'll look at more of that as we explore functional groups. But for now, what that means is I need to start my numbering from the right side. So this would go one, two, three, four. So that makes this butte, this marker is dying. Again, butte one in, because the lower number where the uh, alkene starts, where the double bond starts, is on carbon number one. All right, last one, this has two double bonds. This is going to be, once again, a little bit different. Now, since they both start on the end carbon, it doesn't matter which way I number it. So I can number this left to right or right to left, and it would end up being the same thing. So I'm gonna number this in red and in blue so that we can see that. So one, two, three, four. Blue would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so both of these are gonna be a but. It's a four carbon chain. It'll have some number. Let's give a little more space. Notice I gave a little space on the ene. 
So when I have multiple of the same substituent, multiple of the same functional group, what I'm going to do is identify that there are multiples of that using those same uh, naming conventions that we used in covalent naming. Remember the mono, di, tri, tetra? We're going to use that again. We'll never use the mono because if it's one, it's just one. But when I have multiples of this same substituent, in order to remove as much ambiguity as, ambiguity as possible, I'm going to use that prefix to tell me how many of that substituent. So because there's two here, one, two, I'm going to use di. So this will be diene. But numbers diene. So if I number this from left to right using my reds, then I've got one on one and one on three. So I would say one, three, diene. If I go from the blue, just to see that it doesn't matter which way because they both start on the same side, I'd have a one and a three. So in either case, regardless of how we switch this around, because we've used the same naming convention, this will always be but one three diene. So the same thing is going to work with using methyl or really any alkyl group. My first one up here, I've got a five carbon chain with a methyl group. Let's number this, and since our methyl group is further to the left, let's number it from left to right. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So my methyl group starts on carbon number two. So I will say two methyl, and then this is pentane. So two methyl pentane. The next one, very similar. It's also a pentane, but my methyl group is on the middle carbon. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So this would be carbon number three. Notice because it's in the middle, it actually doesn't matter if we number from right to left or left to right because it would be the third carbon either way, leaving this free to rotate. So this is going to be three methyl pentane. Next, we have the same thing we had over here where I could just I could just take this, I could pull it out of the board, I could flip it around, and I would have the same molecule as that one. So I actually need to number this from right to the left, giving this methyl group the lowest possible number because I don't want to have a molecule that has two names. I want to make sure each molecule has one name and each name has one molecule. That's what it means to remove that ambiguity. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. Making this, again, two methyl pentane. All right, the last one has two methyl substituents. We're going to follow the same rules we did for our alkenes. So I'm going to number this. I'm going to go from right to the left, just switch things up. But it isn't actually going to matter because this is going to work the same way either way. But oftentimes, you will need to number it both ways to make sure that you're getting the lowest number possible. As you get used to it, it won't take that much time. So I've got a 2 and a 4. So I'm going to write 2, comma, 4. And then because I have two methyl groups, I'm going to use the prefix di. If I had 3, I would say tri. If I had 4, I'd say tetra. You probably won't ever see more than 4. So 2, 4, dimethyl, pentane. All right. So now that we have these numbers, we're going to be able to build pretty much any molecule using double, triple, or single bonds, using any number of alkyl substituents. We're going to be able to build all kinds of, mo uh, all kinds of molecules of varying complexities and specificities using these numbering systems.